So John Piper has a really good, uh, he had a really good idea. And I've, I've heard him say this numerous times. He said, when I was starting out, somebody else told me that I should find a teacher from the past and I should attach my, myself to that teacher. Now, he chose uh, Jonathan Edwards. And so if you, if you read any John Piper, he constantly referenced Jonathan Edwards. He's written books on Jonathan Edwards. But basically what he did was he, he tried to always be reading something by Jonathan Edwards. And I thought, you know, that is a really, really good idea to just find somebody that you that is in the past who's who's kind of a giant of theology and attach your, you know, and just try to be in their works and understanding who they are and almost being taught by them. And so I chose John Owen and I have purchased you know, Kindle's a wonderful thing. I've purchased so many of his books, and I've purchased his sermons, a book on his sermons, some that aren't that weren't even published during his lifetime. Um, I've now uh, purchased biographies on John Owen. I've downloaded a couple of PhD dissertations on John Owen's theology, and uh, so I just have a huge catalog of John Owen. And boy, oh boy. That guy, he is, uh, he's encouraging. <laughs> he's, he, uh, I mean, his theology, his, his level of, of high Christology is just, it's unparalleled. Um, his book, Glory of, uh, the Glory of Christ, uh, is, is just unreal. It is really good. So anyway, I've been immersed in John Owen, and uh, I've also been immersed in his life. And, and uh, man, he he didn't have it easy. He, uh, you know, he he lost his wife, his first wife. He lost uh, eleven children, including one that that made it all the way to adulthood. Um, just a real a lot of loss. So pretty, pretty interesting. Anyway, um, I think it's a good, a good practice to find a, uh, you know, a teacher. And obviously I don't, I don't agree with John Owen on everything by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I disagree with him on a lot of theology, Um, but it doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting to see where we diverge from each other, but also where we agree with each other. So it's been a really interesting practice, but it shows you when someone has written so prolifically, like over many, many years, like you, there's, you can't not take away or, you know, glean some wisdom from just, you know, tracking. John Owen put down over, over 6 million words to paper. Um, okay. I did not know that. Yeah. He is one of the, uh, he's written the largest, I think if that took a minute, I think it still might be to date uh, the largest uh, commentary on Hebrews. It definitely was at the time um, he wrote, which uh, hey, once wow, again, cool. I, I disagree with him on a lot of it. However, I now, now purchased... give us a little quick, little, little quick lesson, Caleb. English Puritan, what, six, 16 or 1700s, 1700s, He was 1600s. born in 1616. So five years after the uh, oh, King okay. James was published. But the idea is... He's in England, and it's like there's Catholicism has enmeshed itself with Christianity, and they're trying to like in the wake of the Reformation, right? They're trying to, or in in its progress, yeah, trying to yeah, weed out. And, and the Bible is the the core, and the traditions of man are being like weeded out. Yeah, he uh, he saw a lot of his friends die. Uh, I think it was in the 70s, the, the 1660s and 70s, he saw a significant amount of his friends beheaded and then their heads put on spikes. Um, so, you know, and this is it, this is right around the time that his, his uh, daughter dies. Now, he had 10 children that died in infancy, but he had one child who lived all the way to, uh, to adulthood. So she's dying right around the same time that all of his friends are being beheaded and, and he's trying to keep his head down, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, He's trying to keep his head down so that he too is not, you know, and he's, he's trying to be ecumenical. He's trying to, he's trying to be a bridge, but the, perhaps one of the saddest things about John Owen is that he did all this work. And then at the, on his, you know, at his death, he looked at it and thought that the Re- reformation was coming to an end and uh, that the church had rejected the Trinity and uh, Sola Scriptura and that they had lost. <clears throat> so he died thinking that the reformation was a failure. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.